on behalf of icit academy i welcome you all to get set go an exclusive induction program for the first year students of icit academy member institution icit academy is an initiative of government of india in collaboration with state government and industries icit academy is a non for profit autonomous society and first of its kind venture started to bridge the gap between industry and academia icit academy is very delighted to launch this new initiative get set go at your institution for the benefit of first year students this covid 19 pandemic is undoubtedly changing the way in which institution should make their students industry ready as students start their career in the new normal world they certainly need guidance to progress in their career this program will focus students on developing self awareness get a broader view of life and move towards exploring their academic interest and career aspiration we have we will have industry leaders and expert from various industries to address the first year students on specific themes such as how to approach your higher education how to approach your focus uh, career development etc on behalf of icit academy i once again welcome all the speakers for today's session and i also extend my warm welcome to all the students of for this exclusive session get set go which is an initiative of icit academy Dr P Mahendran secretary G Vengar Swami Nadu College Dr Mahendran worked as a psychology professor in the department of psychology at PhD CAS Coimbatore he inculcates a spirit of learning and discipline among students at the campus and has taken initiatives to develop the language skills of each and every student he believes in the excellence of the college and does everything to sustain and enrich the quality of every student let's welcome Dr P Mahendran At the outset, let me thank the organizers, the ICT Academy, and the organizing team for giving me this opportunity to interact with the, the first year, the freshers, students. It is a great opportunity uh, to be on this platform, online platform, to give certain suggestions for the improvement of their learning. For the first years, so you are you are entering into a very dynamic field. Uh, uh, I know the uh, the uh, uh, graduation undergraduation program where you have such a kind of a goal where uh, of the of after the the three years of completion, what would be the outcome? So the first itself, you know, and uh, they should have a kind of a insight into towards which direction we should move. after 3 years of uh, uh, strict curriculum learning and what would be the end and of course uh, uh, you might be knowing that uh, the, uh, the learning perspective needs to be uh, properly groomed then the process should go should go on without any disturbance for which you need to have your own uh, kind of a uh, input Uh, to to work out uh, which direction uh, we should go, and uh, like we would have uh, listened to very many uh, the motivational uh, uh, speeches and all the programs that have attended, where uh, the the eminent speakers, uh, the counselors would have given a uh, number of tips, like uh, like you know the the uh, start from the beginning, complete the process which you have already started. And come out of the uh, comfort zone, have kind of a commitment. All this uh, general advice is is very much essential. Of course, you will be following that also. But uh, from my side, what I would like to stress upon is that uh, you know uh, there are four important uh, uh, fields which you ought to know. That uh, first of all, you should believe in yourself. What is it? Basically, uh, I'll be touching upon four important. Uh, Uh, feels like uh, intelligence, and the second uh, most important is that aptitude, and the third is that uh, the personality, and fourth uh, the basic thing is that interest. These are the four major uh, divisions which shapes a person. The learner, 
or we should, uh, uh, in order to understand about doing, we should uh, progress. And uh, probably that uh, with the basic uh, knowledge of uh, uh, schooling, you are entering to the college uh, higher education institution, where uh, now uh, you have to have a kind of a, a, uh, the analysis, uh, uh, analysis like, uh, well, my, where should I go? Or, uh, what kind of a, or, uh, the, the uh, input uh, which I have to give, all that sort of uh, exercise you should have. In the sense that uh, you know, the intelligence is basically intelligence as it comes, uh, the, the, we are not inferior to anyone. Basic intelligence, every uh, individual has got uh, the, the, the basic intelligence. There is no doubt at all. But everybody, of course, you know, based on the genetic input, we go on with certain uh, the, uh, qualities, uh, which doesn't mean that uh, we are weak in everything. But potentially we are divine. What is there inside is, uh, is the one which is uh, uh, the very much divine. In that respect, it is so complete. So we are endowed with uh, the, the basic intelligence. And uh, the intelligence uh, may be like, you know, I am, I am uh, short, I am black, and I am British, and I am tall, I am white, and all that thing in the, comes out of the genetic input which doesn't uh, have its uh, relation to the intelligence. First of all, we should believe that every creature, every individual have got the minimum, the basic intelligence for that has been given by the uh, Supreme Soul and uh, the, which will, uh, uh, you know, we, are, we become eligible in the sense that uh, you are capable of, uh, of uh, showing our uh, uh, mind to, uh, to any, any kind of task which is assigned to us. First and foremost is that uh, we should believe in oneself that we are not uh, you know, inferior. Uh, we are, uh, uh, we are uh, the, uh, uh, having uh, intelligence, which is normal intelligence, which will help us to go further forward. And the second most important thing is that the, uh, the aptitude. The aptitude, only when it uh, comes to the aptitude, differential aptitude is there, where we may be differing. Of course, the man differs. There are individual differences. Uh, this individual difference doesn't uh, totally differentiate with the basic intelligence, but it gets differentiated with aptitude. And aptitude is nothing like, you know, uh, are very more specific in the sense, you know, uh, um, uh, some might be more uh, more having uh, the uh, uh, aptitude towards uh, the uh, three-dimensional, the spatial kind of relations and architectural and aesthetic uh, 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 beauty uh, that related field. Some might be interested more of uh, uh, basic uh, uh, calculations, mathematical calculations or numerical uh, uh, evaluations. Some might be interested with uh, the motors, machines and all that. Some might be more uh, having more, uh, more uh, uh, aptitudes like uh, the, the language related. Some might be uh, interested with, um, uh, might be again uh, with uh, the uh, uh, mechanical kind of uh, uh, the uh, activities we just you know this is uh, gets differentiated the people across the uh, area therefore we have to try to understand about what kind of attitude uh, i mean uh, aptitude we have and which you have can have the assignment load analyze uh, how to identify this attitude the one which grab you when you wake up when you go to bed the activity which literally grab you uh, to get into that that particular field might be that you know so for example uh, when I go back to home and uh, there is a sports uh, thing which uh, there is a kind of a compulsion that I should go that particular uh, internal urge will be there the, then uh, maybe like you are much interested in sports some might be interested in going for drawing that a drawing you know uh, all that you know, uh, uh, drawing related instruments uh, which uh, which will be attracting you immediately you, you might be compelled to uh, go towards that some might be interesting uh, going for watching uh, in front awareness uh, like going out and seeing the what what, what is out there and this is something different in uh, uh, showing kind of happening towards the natural beauty and uh, some uh, might be differentiating with others, like uh, going out and helping the downtrodden, and helping the sick and uh, the, the disabled. But this sort of, you know, uh, uh, the, the inner inner nature 
uh, which which uh, which uh, really makes you to go towards them, which will literally uh, pull you back towards them. That is the attitude. First of all, you should know that having that basic intelligence, where uh, which kind of a specific attitude which I possess, which is nothing but internal potentialities, which will be there, uh, there in you, which you have to scientifically analyze. In that uh, sense, you know, if you go along with that, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the point of reference, then probably you can excel. And uh, more than that, you know, with the basic intelligence and being with the specific uh, aptitude. And next, uh, most important thing comes like uh, the, uh, the interest. Interest is nothing but you have to cultivate. You have to cultivate the interest and uh, having got into that particular field, you should commit totally and you should involve totally. That self-commitment is more important, not kind of a compulsion from the, uh, the outside, from your parents or brothers or sisters or other siblings, but you have to create your own. You have to have your own kind of a self-interest in that field and you know in that particular area and finding the time to, uh, to, to complete the process, to get into that, uh, knowing about the ABC of that task, and you know, getting totally uh, into it, which uh, showing kind of interest, which will definitely uh, make you to 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 grow to a greater height. And which, of course, will be able to cultivate that interest. And uh, more than that, you know, uh, the the uh, next important aspect is about uh, that about personality. Personality will do matters a lot. Having basic intelligence, having identity a specific uh, area of uh, the interest or the uh, having that particular uh, uh, attitude to fulfill, and then comes the personality. Personality is nothing but like uh, you know uh, what sort of a uh, uh, the, the the closeness you try to show for the task that you have uh, undertaken. Maybe like you know the broad areas are they may, maybe like you know uh, to put it in a simple form, uh, some might be uh, submissive, maybe reserved, where you know referred. To, match with the aptitude, like, you know, for a, a, a reserved kind of a person, maybe like uh, the clinical kind of a job, maybe good. Maybe like, uh, maybe, maybe a person maybe might be more uh, extrovert nature, where extrovert nature may be uh, having an uh, attitude towards uh, serving others. Maybe the service related uh, profession might be good. And some might be uh, uh, like, you know, maybe more average, uh, which is uh, suitable for all uh, the uh, the task which is assigned and more and more you know what we uh, want to have to have is that you should be a role model as a role model personality in the sense that uh, so others should really follow the one which you exhibit and that kind of the leadership quality the compassion empathizing with the the downtrodden showing love and affection to the children and showing kind of a commitment uh, to, uh, to the profession that they've taken, or uh, to the studies, and the and the, the job, and whatever the kind of the so the, the uh, profession that you, that you uh, selected, and uh, which is uh, the really ultimately uh, you know uh, shapes your person. With this uh, thing that uh, this four aspects, uh, the intelligence, and the aptitude, and uh, the core uh, trait or type of personality. And the interest, which is uh, uh, going hand in hand, which is more holistic than uh, the, the, the uh, uh, you may be uh, uh, having an integrated personality, integrated uh, kind of holistic person, where whatever the task that you take, uh, that will uh, definitely will bring in good results. Good results. What is expected is that uh, as a teacher, what I expect from you all is that. Uh, and you should believe. Self belief, belief is very important. Self belief that uh, I am not uh, uh, the you know, sick. I am not uh, uh, the the inferior. I am sound in every way and uh, uh, in every aspects. That uh, self belief is very much important. And uh, with that, you know, you have to uh, engage totally, positively all the time, because you know at this uh, stage. Uh, you have you got a tremendous uh, amount of energy. That energy has to be spent positively. Keeping engage, engaged for your own progress. For your own progress is very, very important. You have to have kind of a, a, a timeline. Yes, 
for a short period bond, a yeah, middle level, what should be done? For long perspective, what should be done? This, you know, uh, with this little bit of perspective, having a road of interest and and showing uh, showing with that, you know, the self field is related to your specific aptitude. Uh, probably uh, you will excel in uh, the field uh, that you have chosen. And uh, truly, uh, see that uh, since you know uh, the Swami Vivekananda say, said that each uh, soul is potentially divine. That particular feeling you should have, or uh, irrespective of your you know height, weight, color, and the kind of intelligence, you know that uh, positive feeling you should have. That positive feeling uh, is the one which will push you forward, forward, uh, and uh, to uh, to get to the the, the the studies and showing you are, uh, you know, the uh, to to excel in in the, the learning process. And uh, what I believe is that you know, if you put a little effort, whether you are, uh, of course, to a certain extent, some some context you may not be interested. Out of out of the compulsion of join some courses, then never mind it. Never mind it. If you started loving the subject, you started committing yourself. Uh, Making effort, every effort, from in a way, uh, away the time, make use of the time positively. Then over the period, that learning itself will will uh, will become permanent. That will never leave you out, and that will grab you totally. And, uh, so therefore, you have to show whether uh, uh, they compul compulsively you have uh, been uh, admitted in the, into the course, or you are. Uh, for out of interest you join, it doesn't matter, but you have to show little interest and involvement and the again, uh, uh, yeah, specific guidelines in the preparation of the lessons. That will definitely, uh, definitely will, will get you to the uh, position uh, which you really wanted to be. Uh, therefore, uh, the have a faith in you, uh, be positive, uh, take your uh, scientific uh, approach. Be always smiling, accept everything as it is, and uh, uh, make your own plan of uh, study every day. And without any whatever the plan of action that you have planned, should not get deviated. And uh, see that if you have decided to spend at least half an hour, not necessarily that you have spent four hours or so, but half an hour is more than enough. This half an hour spent, it, see that that is consistently being utilized. That particular hour, particular. Hour, uh, in a period, and even after the uh, class hours, we go home. See that you spend little time, and uh, while you are uh, before just uh, before going to bed, and uh, you know uh, try to study, and also in the early morning, the same lesson that you have learned should study. In that, uh, with that uh, kind of a little practice and believing in you, and definitely I believe that you will uh, success in the field that you have chosen. And I wish you all the best and have a, a good learning. Thank you. Dr. B. N. Vutambi, President, ICT Academy. Dr. Anbu has 21 years of experience in the IT, ITES, and education industries. Dr. Anbu holds a bachelor's degree in computer application, a post graduation in business management, and PhD in the area of skill development. He is also a member of governing councils and board of studies in various higher educational institutions across India. Let's welcome Dr. B. Anbutambi. Hello and welcome to all freshers to this Get Set Go session from ICT Academy. Get Set Go, as the name says, it is actually the get set go for all of you because you are now getting into the new journey of education. Now you are moving from school to college and most important point is that you are moving in a very very important situation where when we talk about this pandemic situation which has been uh, you know, changing the way in which we are all working in the last one year and this is the time frame when you are getting into uh, your higher education so you are you, you will have to do things uh, little different than what others were doing earlier. So uh, once again I welcome all of you to this world of higher education and you are really now getting set to go towards the new part of your life. 
my name is Dr. Anbu Tambi, uh, Vice President at ICT Academy. Uh, I am here to share with you six important pointers that you will take up you now when you pursue your higher education from now on. As I mentioned, uh, now you, you are a very, very new student. You are the student of the new normal. You are not like the earlier year students. And I don't know, you may not be like the future students also. You are, you are a very, very unique batch or a different set of students you know, who have joined uh, higher education. Uh, you should, you should uh, have focus on the six points what I am going to spend uh, the next 10 to 15 minutes with all of you. The first and foremost important point is now you will have to define your goal very, very specifically because that will make more meaning to what you will pursue in this next three years or four years of journey. Uh, before you define your goal, you should understand the difference between the way in which you approach the school education and the way in which you will approach the higher education now on. Uh, imagine you now till last year you have been in school and every time you know you are all whether you be at uh, 10th standard or 11th standard or 12th standard all along the last three years you were, you were working for one single goal or one single objective was to score high marks or 100% or of your marks in your 12th standard because that one number that one mark was the one parameter that was defining how your higher education will be. So based on the marks that you have secured, now you are into higher education. You may be you know, studying engineering, you may be studying computers, you may be studying electronic, you may be studying commerce, you may be doing law, you may be doing medicine, you may be doing anything. But the point is, till last year, all along the 12 years of your school education journey, your only focus or the goal was to get 100% marks in your plus 2 because we all know uh, it, it was a very defined parameter for the next part of life which is higher education which means the goal for each of you in school was mostly or only the marks but when it comes to college it is going to be different it is not going to be marks only it is going to be very different than what you were uh, no, doing at school here by end of your 3 years or 4 years of your journey you will have to fit a goal what you want to pursue after that would you like to go to higher education would you like to enter into job market would you like to be an entrepreneur because you can take multiple roads after your journey of this uh, education that you're going to pursue from now on so the goals in a college will be different because it depends upon what you wanted to do what 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 is your interest on what you want to pursue after your education so it, it is not one single common goal uh, for all of you it is going to be very different now you may be uh, a batch of students now there are 10 students sitting in one 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 uh, desk and you will find each of them will have a different goal as i mentioned now uh, one uh, person will be keen to get job with the leading organization one one will be keen to go to the us and uh, no work there and somebody is interested in uh, taking up a product and making it as a uh, innovation and then you know pursue entrepreneurship opportunity Somebody may be interested in government services. Someone may be interested in taking care of family business. So everyone are unique in nature. So everyone's goal will be unique in nature. But you will have to define that goal yourself. So once you define that goal, you will be able to approach your next three to four years of higher education, specifically your undergraduation, based on that goal. Because you know, that goal can define certain activities or certain actions that you will take in this next four years. So the very important point or the first step you should do is to define your goal. And how do you define your goal? You will have to go to my second point. The second point is understanding career opportunities. Now that you have joined a course, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you could, have, you could have chosen any stream or any domain based on either your interest or based on guidance of your parents, guidance of your uh, mentors or your brothers. A lot of guidance would have come to you and you would have also done a deeper uh, analysis and then finally now you have ended up in a particular degree. You may be now studying you know, computer science engineering or you know, uh, commerce or law or medicine, whatever. Now you need to understand, now that you have decided that you will be into this particular stream, you will need to go deeper to the stream and understand what are the kinds of career opportunities available for this particular stream. Let me take an example. 
Now, if you are a computer science uh, student, maybe you, know, you, you, you have joined uh, computer science engineering or IT or you, may, you would have joined uh, BSc computer science or uh, uh, no, whatever, no, any, 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 anybody related to, I mean, any uh, stream related to IT and computer science, you should know what are the kinds of career opportunities available. So, you, you may, you may go for work. When you say you may go for work, there are multiple avenues that uh, are available in front of you. You may go and work with an IT services company. You may become a programmer or you may become a data analyst or you may become a network specialist or you may go and join a BPO where you may be, you may be a technical uh, uh, associate, you, know, you may be a support executive or you may, you may uh, support uh, you know, technology services or you may do uh, you know, back-end processing of lot of processes. There are a lot of job roles defined you know, uh, under this computer science uh, related streams and if you, if you go deeper and analyze the kinds of career opportunities are available for this particular stream, there will be 100. So, if you uh, know, I would uh, urge every one of you to go to uh, the government's uh, website. There is something called uh, uh, no Skill Development Corporation, which has defined job roles for every sector, which means uh, if you are in computer science stream, your, your focus will be by default in IT. So, that for IT industry, there are hundreds of job roles uh, which have been defined. Similarly, if you are a BCom uh, student, you know, for the commerce and accounts uh, background students, you know, that there is an industry which you may look at uh, in the future for careers is banking and finance industry. So, there is a sector called BFSI sector where there are multiple job roles uh, are available in that particular sector. Like this, the government of India has identified uh, almost 30 to 35 sectors. Under each sector, you know, what are the kinds of job roles which are available and what is the work in the job role? What is the future potential for the job role? What are the characteristics needed for the job role is well defined by government uh, under this initiative uh, uh, you know, uh, in uh, National Skills Development Corporation. And those documents and details are available online. So, apart from that, you can you can go through a lot of websites, a lot of news uh, portals, a lot of uh, uh, YouTube videos by experts to understand what are the further career opportunities are available for your specific domain. So, you should have good understanding of that because that will help you to define your goal. If I am pursuing computer science engineering, I may pursue myself to become a data science engineer only because I, I do not want to focus on programming, I do not want to focus on uh, uh, no, uh, the, the infrastructure side, but I may be keen to pursue on data science. So, if you will do that only when you know what are the kinds of career opportunities are available for your particular domain. So, that was my second important point which is understanding career opportunities for your domain. The third and most important is once you identified yourself as a computer science student or as a commerce student, now you will need to you will need to build solid foundational skills for your domain. So, what do you mean by solid foundational skills? You, you, you are now into a particular stream and there are certain things which will never change for that domain. Let us again take uh, computer science as example. Once you take computer science, the basic programming knowledge or basic understanding about the infrastructure, I mean the hardware, uh, the basic digital literacy or you take how do you live safely in the cyber world? There are certain things which are considered as foundation for that particular stream. Above that, there are certain things which are more foundational. For example, if you are a computer science student, again, you should know how to logically think because every programming or coding that you do, it has to be logically thought and it has to be logically coded. So, there is a logical thinking and there is a problem solving capability that you need to develop in order to build your solid foundation skills. That is the reason if you remember, you know, whenever people start writing uh, codes, I mean uh, do programming, they start with all uh, 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 the, 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 the simple diagrams, the logical theorems and things like that. The reason is it will help you to build solid foundational skills. You can ask me what uh, what will be the kinds of solid foundational skills for uh, commerce graduates. No, I am just taking example of computer science and commerce just to give broad understanding of all. You take a commerce graduate, in today's context, foundation skill of course, in subject they will need to understand in depth analysis of you know, accounting processes or you know, uh, finance uh, processes etc. But you, you look at you know, today, we talk about GST in a big way. 
Today we talk about financial inclusion in a big way. You go to any bank now, uh, now we are, you go to any citizen, everyone uh, now is interested in uh, uh, now taking loans or getting credit cards or now uh, pursuing their financial uh, you know, uh, uh, ambitions and things like that. So imagine as a graduate of commerce, you should know in depth, you should have a good financial literacy knowledge, uh, which, which will start with how do you do good savings, how do you uh, manage your credit and debit, which means the personal financial side and you should know all current government uh, regulations, which means right from GST, the current companies act, how it is being done and you should know how to read a balance sheet. You, you, you are finding a lot of uh, uh, no companies publishing their balance sheet in the newspaper. Why are they publishing? There is a reason why people are publishing. So you should you should get to know that. No, you should you should read those balance sheets and you should understand how to how to read that. No, that itself is a skill. So there are certain foundational skills for every uh, no stream uh, uh, which you are studying. You take uh, no uh, uh, even if you take uh, if you are in BSc physics, you you should know uh, some amount of statistics. You should know some amount of maths. You should know some amount of uh, uh, no. Uh, uh, basic uh, you know, theorems that are uh, theories that you have learnt in school level because that will be build a foundation for you to pursue your education format. So you will have to identify the areas which are considered to be foundational skills for your domain and you should be very strong in that foundational skills. Again why I am reiterating here is lot of things are changing and new things are coming up. You, you just take computer science uh, uh, you know, uh, students. Every time we talk about a new technology, every time, no, a few years back we, we spoke about Visual Basic, then we, we heard a name called Java, now you are saying Python, so tomorrow we, it will be something else. So everything will change, I mean the tools and technologies may change, but the foundation will remain the same. So which means your coding skill will remain the same, your ability to understand cyber security will remain the same, your ability to uh, no, solve a problem will remain the same. So certain things are foundational irrespective of whatever changes happens uh, in the future, whether it be in the industry or in academia, you should ensure the foundational skills are built stronger. So that, that's, that's my third important point. The fourth, again, the most important but are very relevant to you is develop knowledge, skills and attitude. This is the one which you will, you will come across uh, often whenever uh, no, any, anybody from the industry speak to you or even when your teachers are talking to you, you will come across these three words. So more specifically, I would like you to understand the difference between knowledge and skill because many a times you know, the students also just coming into college, they don't easily understand the difference between these two. They think you know, all knowledge or skills, actually it is not. For example, again, let me take. Whatever you have learnt in school, most of the cases, it is, it is considered to be good knowledge. Knowledge would have earned you good marks. But is it a skill? No, I, I have a doubt. For example, you would have learnt algebra. You know, you, you know a formula x plus uh, y the whole square is equal to what or whatever. No, whatever theory you take, no? you have, uh, whatever um, uh, uh, formula that you have learnt, where it is applied, are you able to apply it somewhere? If you are able to apply that knowledge somewhere and if you are able to convert that into a capability, then that means a skill. For example, let me, let me make it a little more easier. For example, we all would have learned riding cycle in the standard 6 or standard 7 when we, when we are in, in, in school, we would have learned a riding cycle. So how did we all uh, ride cycle? Did we uh, get a blackboard? Did we draw a cycle there? Did we, you know, say, did, did somebody, did our parents say this is the tire, this is the pedal or this is the, uh, no, uh, steering. Did they say that? No, they didn't say it. They just uh, bought you a bicycle and you, you were made to sit over the bicycle and you no, know, somebody helped you to push uh, for one or two days, then you fell down, then you became, you know, a little uh, uh, more confident. From day three, you started riding a little bit, day four, day five, day six. No, in, in a week's time or in two weeks time, you, 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 you rode the bicycle yourself. Bicycle was learnt by you as a skill. You didn't, you didn't learn to ride a bicycle through knowledge, which means nobody taught you, you know, using a blackboard or using a, using a theory. You just learned it as a skill. The advantage or the power of skill is, 
even today you know nobody teaches you how to ride a bicycle you don't need uh, a rehearsal to ride a bicycle as soon as you get a bicycle you just go and ride because you know it you have imbibed that skill so that is the power of skill in case if i am able to convert all my knowledge into skill great but wherever appropriate we need skills to be built i should know how to do things if i know how this light works which is a knowledge if i am able to change the circuit and make sure it works at the appropriate time or if i am able to repair it it is a skill that is the difference between a skill and a knowledge so now that you are in graduation everything and anything what you learn your next question should be how can this be applied or how this how, how is this working how this light is working how this fan is working why is the fan rotating in one side why it, why should it not uh, no uh, rotate in the other side you should ask lot of questions yourself so when you ask lot of questions you will be able to develop your skills so whether again let me tell you uh, uh, for computer science if you take for example if you know uh, you know if you learn through a book you will understand how to do coding but only thing when you sit and do coding you will understand the nitty gritties you may want to know design something you will have to take the tool sit on the tool and design that particular product only then you will know how or know how difficult it is only then you will imbibe that as a skill again the power is once you imbibe the skill it is with you no, no not easily it will go away from you but once it is only a knowledge you no know, uh, our human brains may forget it after some time just like you no know, i i would have learned uh, you no know, mathematical uh, you no know, trigonometry theory you no know, uh, in in standard 12 i would have definitely forgot that but again i have learned riding cycle bicycle in the class 7 but till today i wouldn't have forgot uh, no uh, riding uh, bicycle because that's a skill so that is the power of uh, uh, no skills so certain things definitely you should have knowledge which means you should understand the concept but hereafter you know moving forward because you are in a college you should be able to uh, no convert every knowledge into a skill again taking example of a commerce student reading a balance sheet is a skill it is not a knowledge so if you if you if you learn every single item in the uh, balance sheet and understand what it is it is a knowledge for example there is something called interest income in the balance sheet if you understand what is it then it is a knowledge if you are able to interpret it by uh, no saying whether it is after tax or before tax if you are able to read the balance sheet and understand whether this company is making profit whether this is a good company how is the valuation if you are able to interpret things that's a skill as simple as that so my dear friends please give highest importance towards acquiring skills again skills need not be very big you no know, you can start with small skills first i will i i will learn how to change the bulb which is my first skill second i will know or i should know how to do some minimal repairs if it happens to my uh, uh, no uh, bedroom uh, lights or switches that's a basic level skill then you go on so every single you uh, know uh, you know people is to say if you are able to refill your uh, no refill air uh, yourself uh, to your car or if you are able to change your tires when there is a you know puncture which means you are imbibing certain skills so as small as that we are not talking about high end skills but you have to imbibe that characteristic of getting skills yourself okay so that's the power of knowledge and skills and attitude is very simple how you carry yourself i have knowledge i have developed skills next is attitude will i be liked by people because end of the day you will need to work with people in college it is all going to be team work it is not going to be individual in school mostly it was individual you were focused on your knowledge you were focused on your exams you were focused on your marks but once you are in college now you have to learn learn together you have to do projects together you have to work on you no know, exercises together you will have to together do a pro, no uh, activity in your labs you will have to together work on the final project you will have to together evolve an idea you will have to together work on some project and you can become bigger uh, entrepreneur in the future so it is going to be team work so in order to make sure you are a very good team player you should carry a very good attitude which means people should like you your peer should like you uh, no your uh, your teacher should like you when i say like you they should be, they should feel happy to deal with you which means they should feel your attitude is very good so you have to develop it over a period of time 
you should go and talk to them you know people should uh, uh, feel free to talk to you and you should feel free to talk to them so you have to do lot of collaboration and make yourself position yourself as a person who is having very good attitude so that's more important you know many companies uh, you know while they come for hiring after your uh, education they will look at your knowledge which means do you have conceptual understanding of everything second the skill are you able to do things are you able to execute things third is the attitude are you good enough to hire are you able to relearn are you able to work with people or will you be able to you know set will with their team so these are some of the elements which every company will look at after your education so you cannot build this on your last day of your college you have to build from now on so give importance to these three is what my uh, fourth uh, point was point 5 the next one is building an entrepreneurial mindset you may ask me you have just come into a college and you know i i'm talking about entrepreneurial mindset you should always remember lot of large companies today what we are you know using that it be whatsapp or facebook or many more companies where student projects out of colleges which means somebody in the college while learning you no know, higher education or edu- you know education like you all have innovated that particular product or he has come up with an idea innovated a product understood there is a business uh, potential for that product and by the time he or she came out of college they came out of this idea and they became an entrepreneur and you will be surprised if you just go and google it out you no know, saying uh, which, which are the companies those who have come out of college and started you will find hundreds and hundreds of companies those who have come out and started just after college that is the biggest potential opportunity for all of you because you are in this particular situation where there are lot of opportunities for you to innovate new things that to specifically after this post pandemic situation lot of problems were identified lot of newer thoughts have come because of this new normal uh, way of working lot of potential is available for you to uh, no ideate new things and come up with business ideas which means right from now on no for the next 3 uh, to 4 years you will you will build that mindset of an entrepreneur you will not prepare yourself just to go and work somewhere while no your entrepreneurial mindset uh, uh, will also support you to get uh, uh, a good job and work in a job but your primary purpose should not be to get employed somewhere you should think okay let me run my own company let me you uh, know uh, uh, have a uh, few people working for me let me build a new idea let me make that idea visible to the world so build that entrepreneurial mindset from now on when you have that approach in your mind as you pursue your course you will come across lot of problems lot of solutions you may come across such solutions which can become a you know entrepreneurship opportunity for you so for which you should use the power of social media now you are you are you are already there in social media i need not ask you you will definitely be there in facebook or linkedin or whatsapp you are using everything and the the the, the power of that is you can get to know the stories from across the world you can you, you can easily collaborate with somebody in some other location earlier days it wasn't there today you have an idea you want to talk to somebody in us and get it collaborated with somebody there there is a possibility you can do it in 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 matter of minutes so i think you should use the power of uh, social media connect with people whom you are interested in connect with people who will make uh, value to your idea or to your uh, vision and it's easy to collaborate so use the power of social media get right mentors a lot of people those who have uh, no succeeded there could be good teachers who are experts in particular technology or particular products or they'll be running lot of consulting assignments in your own institution there will be teachers who have, you know what you, you're doing lot of who are doing lot of consultancy projects for either for government and corporate they will have in depth in depth knowledge on that particular uh, area you should you should find such people and you you, you should adopt them as mentors and you you can get lot of industry mentors there will be lot of your own you no know, brothers sisters or family friends who will be experts in that domain you should take their mentorship because end of the day mentors will help you to grow further no they will help you to do better in whatever you are doing then third in this particular uh, no building entrepreneurial mindset you should also build a multidisciplinary approach which means i am learning computer science that doesn't mean that i will only understand and know what a computer science engineer can do i should also know what is the problem in other sector thereby whatever i am learning which will help to solve that problem for example a computer science engineer is the one who would have built a program for a bank you go to any bank today it is all automated right we are all using no our atm cards or our internet banking and you are doing money transfer etc etc 
if you look at banking and financial industry is dominated by commerce graduates or uh, the people working in accounts and finance or you no know, banking but if you look at the technology or the backbone for the entire bfsa industry or the banking and finance industry is a software which is a technology the software is written by a computer science guy so you look at this a computer science guy should have knowledge about the banking and finance industry and their operations only then he can do a better uh, no where he can develop a better software which means he should have or you should have a multidisciplinary approach so anything i do i understand i am learning something and i should see where else this is applicable i may be i may be developing i may be a mechanical engineer i may be developing uh, no i may be designing a product and i should know how this product will be applied whether it be manufacturing i may you know give this product to uh, some solar frames or i may do this product to uh, some water industry i may do this particular product to a refining industry refinery industry or whatever oil and gas industry anywhere so which i should i should have knowledge about the other domains also whichever is related to me relevant to me so you should have that mindset i am studying in a particular stream but still i will get a multidisciplinary approach if you look at many many projects which was which were recently succeeded many companies which have come up in the recent past are all multidisciplinary products you take no you take healthcare there, there is a big domain called healthcare no techno healthcare technology which means there is a knowledge of healthcare and there is a knowledge of technology both together makes that healthcare industry or no health healthcare technology industry you take fintech which is finance and technology joining so similarly in your domain you will identify areas where you will get that multidisciplinary knowledge as 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 required as you pursue your next uh, four years so the last and foremost important uh, pointer that i would like to tell all of you is to form good habits because so far whatever i have spoken it is to make you succeed in your next four years but you can form some good habits that will make you succeed not in this next 3 to 4 years throughout your life for example what are the good habits that there you no know, people always confuse between hobbies and time wasters you should have good hobbies what what do you mean by hobby watching the television according to me is a time waster if you are able to do something on it it may be a hobby for example i am i am listening music it is just to engage my time but if i am playing guitar or if i am singing it is a hobby that's the difference between hobby and a time waster i would not say even time waster it is your time killer it will kill your time i can watch a movie i can i can spend my time listening to music but that is not a hobby please understand that hobby is when you are involved in something by imbibing another area or another passion to you if you are singing or if you are playing cricket or if you are you know and if you are playing badminton or if you are sitting and doing some designing work if you are sitting and doing some uh, uh no circuit works or you may just go and walk around everything is a hobby but end of the day is it benefiting you is what you should see so when i am talking about forming good habits i talk about this hobby because many habits you know whatever you think it is good to you if you if you culminate that good habits you know that will become hobby for many of them let's let's take a simple example many people would have got reading books as a good habit indirectly that would have become their hobby many people would have uh, you know uh, chosen to keep their uh, health uh, you know fit or they will go for exercising in the morning they will do some good uh, uh, you know they will play some good games etc thereby they will keep their uh, you know body fit and you no know, and energetic so that that at one point of time that would have been a hobby after some time that's a good habit for one to cultivate so whether it be to ensure you you know your mind is kept perfect your health is kept perfect whatever you identify has a habit towards that i think you should follow that for example again as i told you you can be you know you can be reading lot of books you can watch lot of videos and stories of uh, some big people and get inspired from that you can learn lot of things online or you can you know go and uh, uh, do some activity you no know, you, you can do some activity based uh, uh, you know uh, skills that you can gain you can just do some carpentry work you can just do some painting work so all those will become good habits and your hobbies and your habits will define your future too so these are some of the six points i thought uh, i will tell you uh, in this particular session again just to repeat number 1 define your goals number 2 understand the career opportunities in your domain 
Number three, build solid foundation in your domain. Number four, develop good knowledge, skills and attitude. Number five, build an entrepreneur's mindset. Number six is forming good habits because your life is not started now. Your life will start after this three years or four years. Your real life is when you complete this higher education. So you will have to get prepared for that. So these are some of the pointers, but definitely there are lot many experts, uh, those who have uh, joined this particular today's session, they will give you a lot of inputs and those experts are from, you uh, know, they, they are on leaders from various uh, large organizations and their inputs will be very, very important. Listen to them, note down all the points and ensure that, you know, you pick up few points and start following that and you will definitely come out of uh, uh, no, uh, this particular uh, uh, no undergraduation in very very successful way and you have, you have enrolled and you have come into the college in this pandemic situation and definitely when you come out of the college that's a time when you know, we would have come out of everything and a new world is going to evolve for you. So all the very best my dear friends and have a great higher education next three to four years and you will be a successful uh, citizen for India. Thank you very much. Rajan Seduraman, Chief Executive Officer, Latent Few Analytics. Rajan Seduraman is an experienced Chief Executive Officer with a demonstrated history of working in the management consulting industry. Skilled in global delivery, IT strategy, management, business development, and business process improvement. He is a strong business development professional with a Master's of Business Administration from Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta focused in business administration, management and operations. Let's welcome Rajan Seduraman. So it's, uh, it's a great opportunity that uh, uh, we are able to connect uh, virtually you know, through this uh, mechanism. Uh, my session for, the today, uh, for today, I understand uh, uh, this is going out uh, to all uh, students who are starting uh, or who are on the verge of starting their uh, college experience and uh, uh, I was asked to talk about uh, uh, what uh, might be useful right uh, uh, to those students. Um, I, I decided that I will uh, do a little bit of reflection on uh, what's uh, uh, what are some of the things that I learned uh, during my uh, college life. Uh, what are some of the things that I felt I did well? What are some of the things that uh, I could have done better? And uh, I kind of tried to encapsulate that right in uh, in what I'm going to be uh, speaking about today. Uh, so uh, as uh, uh, as a consultant, right, having a background in consulting, uh, uh, fifteen plus years, uh, I decided that I will use uh, a representative model, right, uh, to use and anchor the main points that I wanted to talk about. So I call this the six E model, right. So I'm going to be talk about, talking about uh, uh, the six things uh, that uh, you can keep in mind right as you start and go through your uh, college journey. Uh, so first off, I think uh, congratulations on uh, uh, joining uh, whichever institute you are a part of. I'm sure that it would have been a very considered decision that you would have taken. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you are very eager uh, to uh, go through your college experience and uh, learn in that process. Uh, so the, my, my first E uh, as part of the 6E model is uh, explore uh, and uh, basically what I wanted to say here is that uh, the college uh, time, uh, the time that you spend in college is really going to give you the opportunity to uh, explore a lot of things outside, right, in the environment, right, in the college, but also it's going to be an opportunity for you to explore yourself in terms of uh, what your interests are and uh, what you like and what you don't like and uh, what are some of the things that uh, you would want to spend your time on right as you go or go through your college life. Uh, this means that uh, oftentimes uh, you should be uh, ready to try new things, uh, things that you have not tried before. Of course, good stuff, not the, not the bad stuff. Uh, even if uh, trying new things is a little scary at the beginning because uh, uh, any new things, any any change, it uh, brings about a certain amount of uh, defensiveness in us. Uh, it, it means that it is always not easy uh, to say that, okay, I'm going to try this out, right? Uh, but one big thing that I learned through my college experience is that the more you put up your hand, the more you're ready to uh, 
come in into an active DS, either a volunteer uh, or even as a leader, right? When there is a, a leadership vacuum, that is what helps you build the kind of skills and capabilities that will be important to you in your in your career, right? As you get into a job, uh, whether it is a job in terms of the traditional corporate sector or whether you're going to be opting for public life, whatever it might be, uh, unless you put up your hand and then you're ready to be counted, uh, it is going to be uh, it's going to be very difficult, right? In terms of uh, uh, how you progress, uh, so being ready to explore new things, being ready to put up uh, your hand. Uh, is one of the very, very important things uh, uh, that I would say is uh, part of the college life. Uh, I studied in uh, Bitspilani and this was in the 1988 uh, to 92 time frame. And uh, one of the things that we had on campus was a gliding club. I mean, it is kind of unique. I don't think uh, uh, too many college campuses can boast of a gliding club. And, and we had one of those gliders, right, which, uh, which is basically uh, uh, a twin seater aircraft uh, and uh, it doesn't have an engine, but instead it has a, a rope that is attached to a winch-like machine. And then when the machine rolls up the rope, the plane kind of takes off. This is in some sense like uh, how do you fly a kite, right? When, when you want the kite to uh, go up in the air. So that is the principle for uh, how the glider was launched into the air. And then, uh, and then it does a few circles and then it, it comes back. Now, of course, uh, something like this was very novel, right? And uh, it isn't something that uh, one would have tried uh, prior to that, of course, these days there are uh, a lot of experiences that uh, people get, you know, be it hang gliding or uh, uh, or base jumping or whatever. But in those days, uh, I hadn't tried any other stuff, right? And uh, just uh, summoning up the courage uh, to go and uh, sign up for uh, uh, the gliding experience, right? And then uh, uh, going through a few classes, uh, that itself was uh, a fantastic uh, experience. I mean, it, it taught me a lot in terms of uh, how can you uh, let go of uh, some of the fears that you might be having and uh, how can you actually uh, convert the opportunities that you have right into experiences that will add value. Uh, so that is one thing that uh, I, I really wanted to put out, you know, that uh, be ready to explore, uh, be ready to try out new things, put up your hand, volunteer for stuff, right? And uh, and then uh, if given the opportunity, uh, lead as well, right? In terms of uh, uh, encouraging other peoples uh, to sign up and come on board. Uh, my second, uh, uh, the second D in my model is uh, uh, is E for Excel, right? And uh, Excel as an excellence, right? Uh, I'm sure that you'll be learning a lot of things uh, in college, but uh, uh, not everything might uh, pique your interest. Not everything might be as exciting uh, as uh, uh, you might want it to be. But I'm sure that there'll be a few things that will really uh, excite your interest, that will excite your passions. Right. And whatever the chosen area of interest be, uh, uh, you should uh, make the effort to excel in that area because excellence is something that will uh, stay with you right through your life. It's kind of a mindset. It's an attitude that you need to cultivate and build. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you would have uh, uh, already been uh, uh, focusing on a few things, even as part of your uh, school life. And I'm sure that many of you bring a variety of talents, even as you start college. Uh, but as you progress through college, uh, as you explore more things and then you figure out what your areas of interest are and what your passion is, uh, you are also going to get an opportunity to go really deep in a particular area you know, where you can build a depth of knowledge and understanding uh, and, and you can really be excellent in that particular area. Now, uh, one of the things that I learned uh, in college right, on how to build that excellence mindset uh, is by taking up a, a responsibility for teaching others, uh, teaching others in my own batch, but teaching others also in my junior batches, because uh, the very act of teaching something uh, helps you focus in a particular area so that uh, uh, you learn more about that topic than any question that can be thrown at you, you know, by uh, by the people that you are teaching. Uh, and uh, excelling at something also means that uh, you, know, you become visible, you become known to others within the institute and uh, there is something that uh, therefore then people say that okay uh, when i uh, remember this person i remember that this person was really fantastic at this you know, was great at this particular topic right uh, or it, it need not just be a topic i mean i remember uh, i had a batch mate this person was really phenomenal at uh, circuit theory circuit theory was one of the courses you now where you learn how to design circuits electrical circuits uh, and uh, we, we dealt with some fairly complex uh, uh, electrical circuits as part of the course. Uh, and this person was so good at it, right, that uh, uh, 
uh, even if you give them uh, uh, a two size chart paper filled with uh, uh, circuit line diagrams he could just by looking at it figure out all the different components and parts of the circuit and know exactly you know how, which part of the circuit is doing what right in terms of what is the purpose of that part of the circuit he was so good at it that uh, anybody who had a doubt in circuit theory you know used to go to that person and uh, even now when i recall that person's name the one thing that stands out uh, in my mind is uh, his knowledge and depth of understanding right of that particular topic uh, there are others uh, who have done uh, 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 really well in in other areas it need not always be academic it need not always be a technical topic or something that you are learning at college it can be even uh, being really good at uh, say communication skills uh, we had an english language activity society right at uh, college and uh, there were people who were so good uh, in some of the jam and debating topics and sessions that uh, that is what i remember them for uh, and and uh, they have gone on to actually use that capability and skill set uh, in what they currently do right in their lives uh, similarly people uh, were uh, some of them were very good at organization skills meaning that uh, being able to conduct events organize events right and and that is what uh, they really excelled at so it doesn't have to be an academic topic it doesn't have to be technical uh, it doesn't have to be related to what you learn in the classroom it can be something else as well but pick something right pick something that really excites your passion pick something that uh, uh, you will be willing to spend time on and then uh, get that mindset and attitude of excelling in that particular area so the second e uh, that i really wanted to leave you with is excel right in your chosen area of interest uh, the third e in my model is uh, uh, is embody right uh, the word embody really means uh, how can you give substance how can you give body to a concept and a thought right now one of the things that uh, you're going to be learning in college uh, a great deal uh, is the ability to analyze things so uh, when complex problems are given you will learn how to dissect those problems and how you learn how to analyze them so that you can break it down into the constituent parts and then you're able to solve uh, individual aspects of the problem uh, which then allow you to solve the complex problem the analysis uh, part is something that uh, comes naturally to many of us as we learn uh, either technical skills or humanity skills or behavioral skills or whatever right uh, what is tougher though is what i call synthesis uh, if given uh, a spectrum of uh, uh, ideas or concepts how do you put it together in order to evolve something uh, that is more interesting that is more exciting right uh, and this calls for a multidisciplinary approach uh, it calls for an ability to have a broad spectrum of understanding on a variety of uh, topics many institutes these days talk about the t model right uh, a t model is uh, where uh, you learn a uh, breadth you learn a variety of things but at a certain level of understanding and then in one topic you go really deep right and and that is the topic that you could potentially excel in right as as i mentioned in my previous point uh, but it is important for you to develop that breadth of understanding the entire world these days is built on uh, uh, what uh, i fondly refer to as uh, encapsulation meaning that uh, whatever is learned and understood by uh, experts in a particular area they try and encapsulate it and then make it easy for people in other fields to consume without bothering about uh, the inner details and the intricacies of uh, what happens so for example uh, if uh, uh, you are driving a car uh, the only thing you need to know is how do you uh, drive the car by operating the steering wheel and the clutch and the brake and the accelerator you don't need to be worried about the automotive engineering and design that has gone into the car that is not necessary for you to drive the car itself but this wasn't the case centuries back when science and technology was in its very nascent stage people were very skeptical of things that they didn't know they had to get into the innards of the details uh, to become confident about uh, uh, what is it that uh, they are using or consuming similarly today if you go to a doctor uh, with any ailment and they prescribe a procedure or a, or a pill you're just going to trust that person's judgment and then go with it right you're not going to be getting into the details of how does that uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient works or what is going to be the details uh, of uh, of a particular surgical procedure you leave it to the experts and then you consume it right so this encapsulation is at play uh, all through the world uh, and it is important for you to be able to understand uh, what are all the things that are encapsulated what is the broad spectrum of uh, capabilities that are available so that you can integrate your knowledge and thinking with 
those handles that are available so that you can then conceptualize and put together more interesting uh, uh, ideas. Uh, and, and that is where that synthesis and a multidisciplinary approach uh, comes into play. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I, I remember uh, there is this website called uh, How Stuff Works. Yeah, it's howstuffworks.com. You can look it up. Uh, that used to be one of my uh, favorite uh, uh, websites, uh, just in terms of learning uh, different things, right? I mean, uh, topics that uh, you are not uh, really studying up, right, in college or, or even as part of your work life, but you're just curious about it because you want to learn how something works, right? Uh, there are plenty of resources available today. I mean, there, there is no dearth of uh, uh, resources for uh, learning today. So therefore, uh, I'll encourage you to build a broad spectrum understanding as well as you go through college. Be curious about what your fellow batchmates are doing. Be curious about what somebody in another discipline is doing. Go and have conversations with them, right? That is how you can uh, build your problem solving skills. At the end of the day, when you finish college and, and when you start a job, uh, you want to be able to be good at how do you take theory and then and then apply it right in practice. Uh, that is very important. And, and theory to application is really what creates value. And uh, the ability to take theory and, and put it into applications calls for a great deal of interdisciplinary interaction. Right? You need to be able to work with so many people from different fields uh, that College gives you a fantastic opportunity because you're going to be having all of these students, uh, your own batchmates, uh, your own friends uh, who will be willing to talk about what is it that they are learning, what is it that they are doing, right? Uh, so use the opportunity uh, to try and uh, uh, learn as much of this. So, so you can give body some much substance uh, only if you have that kind of a broad spectrum understanding. So the third E was embody and uh, you can embody what you learn uh, only if you are able to put together things right uh, from other disciplines and perspectives. So that, that is the, uh, the third thing I want to say. The fourth one, the fourth E uh, that I had in my model is uh, embrace, right? Uh, and, and I use uh, embrace uh, as a way by which uh, uh, you can build relationships with people, right? You need to build lasting relationships with people. That is one of the big things about college life that when you finish college, you're going to be leaving with so many fantastic friends and uh, connections uh, uh, and and relationships uh, which will last for the rest of your life right and people that you can fall back on in uh, thick and thin through uh, uh, through uh, good and bad right uh, and and today uh, it is even easier for you to not only build those relationships but you can sustain those relationships as well i mean i remember uh, that when you are passed out, we created what is called as a yearbook. I'm sure that you'd be doing that as well. And the yearbook was the place where uh, we recorded uh, uh, interesting tidbits and photos and idiosyncrasies of all the people in our batch. And I have a copy of my yearbook, which is in a hardbound form, right? It's a hard copy. We didn't have uh, WhatsApp and Facebook and those things when I passed out of campus. Today, you have technology tools that are available that are going to help you stay connected with your people. But before you can stay connected with the people, you need to actually form those connections in the first place. Uh, I know that people today lament about uh, how uh, uh, people have thousands of uh, acquaintances, but very few friends, right? Uh, real friends. Uh, on Facebook, uh, you might be connected with a lot of people, but how many of them do you truly know, right? Uh, can you truly connect with people and then build those kind of relationships? And that is possible only if you're curious about what is unique about that person. Right, uh, you can really connect with the person only if you strive to understand what is unique about that person. Right, uh, in college you're going to be having plenty of opportunity because uh, many of you might be staying in a hostel, uh, you might be living together in dorms, uh, and you will have the opportunity to get to know people. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you're going to build uh, fantastic friendships and relationships with everybody in your batch or everybody in your campus, but you will pick a few people, right? People with whom you are able to relate, with whom you are able to gel. You have the same wavelength. Uh, use the opportunity to build those relationships. Use technology as a tool to build and sustain the relationships, but not as a substitute for real relationships. That is the one thing that I wanted to say. I mean, because today uh, there is this feeling that uh, uh, if I have uh, a technology tool, it solves all of, all of my relationship uh, challenges. It's not true. Technology can only be an aid to building and sustaining relationships. The hard work of building and sustaining a relationship is still the same as ever. You, you really need to care about other people. 
you need to be bothered about what is unique about individuals so that that becomes the defining characteristic of the relationship that you have with that person so the fourth e is embrace right embrace your connections embrace people that you connect with uh, embrace uh, uh, the opportunity to build those kind of relationships uh, the fifth e that i have in my model is uh, embellish uh, and embellish, uh, if you again look up uh, in the dictionary, basically it means how do you adorn something, right? How do you add to something, right? Uh, and uh, here uh, the, the message I had was just as much as you are going to be using the college experience to learn and uh, you're going to be uh, adding to your skill sets and your capability and your relationships and your depth of knowledge and everything, it is as much important that you're able to give back to the college, give back to the institute. Uh, a lot of the giving back might potentially happen after you are an alumnus, after you get into, uh, you know, into, a, into your job, whatever it might be. But you're going to be having opportunities to give back while you are at college as well, right? I talked about uh, the opportunity to teach, for example, right? You might have opportunities to tutor and teach other students, right? Uh, you might uh, have opportunities uh, uh, to be brand ambassadors uh, even while you are in college, right, when you visit other campuses, when you interact with corporates and so on. Uh, one of the big things that uh, I enjoyed was uh, really the opportunity to, to create a few new things uh, while uh, I was uh, part of uh, uh, BITS. Uh, so we started something called uh, uh, Foundations, which was the first uh, uh, academic gathering uh, of uh, both the academicians as well as uh, professionals from the field, right, in the in this field of civil engineering. I'm a civil engineer, and uh, we created this uh, event called Foundations, you know, where we were able to invite a lot of corporates, academicians, students from other campuses to come and participate uh, in a very interesting two, three day event, right, which explored what are the latest things that are happening in the field of civil engineering and structural engineering. Uh, and I remember that today, even now, because uh, that, that opened up opportunities for me to uh, learn a lot of new things besides the technical stuff that I was uh, learning on college. Uh, and even today, that particular event continues. Uh, uh, it's an annual event and uh, it is there you know, in, the, in the institute. So uh, it, it gives me great pride and satisfaction that I was able to start off something uh, that has endured right uh, uh, over the years. Uh, so you, you're going to be having opportunities to therefore contribute back to the institute while you are on campus and use that opportunity, right? Uh, figure out how you can be brand ambassadors of the institute you know, while you're at college and, and while you're uh, going to be passing up. So those are, that is the fifth uh, uh, E that I had. And the last E is uh, just simply enjoy, right? Uh, it's important uh, for you to uh, uh, use the experience. Uh, it's not uh, all work and uh, no play. Uh, college is uh, the most fun and interesting experience uh, that you can uh, ever have. Most people, if you ask them what is the best phase of their lives, uh, they will fondly look back on their uh, college lives and college experience. Because uh, formative years, you're going to be learning a lot of things, you're going to be building a lot of relationships, uh, and uh, you should use the opportunity to uh, uh, make sure that you know, you're having fun. Right? It's a very unique personal experience that uh, all of us have right? going through college. And nothing can beat that experience. And, and given that you're all starting off your college experience, figure out how you can actually make it a very enjoyable experience for yourself and also for others. Uh, more importantly, uh, in these uh, COVID times, uh, I'm sure that some of you uh, will be getting back to colleges already. Some of you will be looking forward to starting uh, college in person very soon, right? Uh, as the pandemic subsides, some of you are probably starting off only uh, on an online mode. Uh, I'm sure that there will be opportunities for you to get into campuses very soon, uh, but use the opportunity uh, to have a spot of fun, uh, stay healthy, uh, build a strong body and a build, build a strong mind right, as you go through the college. I mean, your experiences uh, will be plentiful, but make sure that everything contributes uh, to staying healthy, both in mind and in, and, and in body. Right. Uh, so those are really the, the things that uh, I thought I will uh, share with you, you know, as you commence your uh, uh, college experience. Uh, remember the the five, the six E's, the explore, uh, excel, uh, embody, embrace, embellish, and uh, enjoy, right? Uh, with that, uh, I want to leave you all. Uh, once again, congratulations on uh, joining our, your institute of uh, choice, and I wish you all the very best. Thank you.
Karayadi Selvan, Managing Director, CAT Center, starting his career in CAT Center as CAT Engineer in 1992, Karayadi Selvan was handed over the responsibility of franchise business in 1995. Today, CAT Center has scaled up to 1000 plus franchise outlets across 31 countries and through its franchising business employs around 7000 plus employees across the country. As the managing director of CAT Center, Dream Zone, Synergy, Livewire, Skill Lease, C Cube, Dream Flower, Franchise Global, and Natural Training Academy, Karedi Silvan oversees all operations of the training business in India and abroad, adding laurels to the education management industry. He was awarded the Times Ascent Asia Specific HRM Congress Awards 2018 for contribution to the field of training and development. Let's welcome. Karayadi Silvan. Vanakkam. Hello friends. I am happy to be here interacting with you today. I thank ICT Academy for taking these kind of initiatives helping students and the industry to interact and make them fully aware about the future. I thank ICT Academy for giving me this opportunity to interact with some of the young minds who are going to decide the future of this world. And people sitting in this room today must thank ICT Academy for its all initiatives to inspire the young minds. It is doing everything possible to inspire the young minds in India so that you are able to conquer the world with much more confidence. Having said that, people sitting in this room are getting into the graduation, the founding stone for the future. And I am very delighted to talk to you from a person who is working on employment, employability and entrepreneurship. We work with a lot of corporates. We work with a lot of industry talking about the kind of people they need for building their organization. Across the country, across the globe, there is always requirement for qualified people. There is nothing called unemployment. Employment is there everywhere. Unemployment is because there is no match between the skills needed by the industry and the skill available in the market. So the students in the college, if they truly understand what are the skills needed by the employer, then they can keep on adding their skills so that they get employment ready by the time they pass out of the college. So how do we plan our career? How do we plan our three years or four years life on the campus in such a way? The stay in the college, you are going to acquire a lot of knowledge. Also, you are going to get ready for an employment immediately after your graduation. There is a depth for qualified individuals. There is a huge shortage of qualified skilled people in the market across the globe. Country like India with young population, with young graduates, availability of young people, we should be able to support the world with full of skills. We should be able to support the human across the globe. You know, the post COVID, we would have realized the need for young people across the globe and India as a country because of our culture, because of our empathy. Everyone wants Indian young people to come to their country. They want India to export young minds of India for the global requirement. While we need these young minds in India, 
we also go beyond the boundary to support the humanity across the globe. For all these requirements of the future, you have to prepare yourself while you are on the campus. You are going to be in the campus, you are going to polish yourself, you are going to make yourself industry ready in the next three to four years. When you go out of the college, when you graduate, you should be the most wanted by the industry. You have to master the skills based on your passion. You have to identify your passion now and you have to hone your skills. You have to polish your passion with a lot of skills that is needed so that you become an expert when you come out. You do not come out as a professional when you come out of the college. You come out as an expert when you come out of the college. You know, being a graduate, being a professional, being an expert is your choice. Whether you want to just study what is in the university curriculum, what is taught in the college and passing out exam is make you another graduate. If you are able to learn professionally the skills and the knowledge, then you call yourself as a professional because you study the subject, you study the skills required, you get little more skill. But if you identify your passion, while you I take the skills, you take the knowledge, also start practicing, start reading a lot more, start developing skills, start taking mentors in one particular skill, you master the skill, then you become an expert when you come out of the college. Everything is possible. If you believe in yourself, if you clearly know what do you want to be, what do you want to achieve, what is your dreams? If you know it clearly, you can be rest assured when you pass out of your college, you are going to pass out as an expert and you will be the most wanted by the employer across the globe. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Is it possible to decide your career at the age of 17? Yes, it is possible. Can I identify my passion at the age of 18? Yes, it is possible. We are learning so many things at this age. Information overflow. We have information available everywhere for you. More than what you need. Okay. So we have to see how we are going to use this college life. Next four years or next three years. Based on the course you have joined. How we are going to make best use of the campus. Best use of your teachers. Best use of your professors. Best use of your library, best use of internet. You are going to determine how successful you are when you come out of the college. Everybody want to be successful. Every parent want their children to be successful. Every parent has a dream for their children. Okay, three generations ago, they were fighting for survival. Two generations ago, they were fighting for the survival plus security. And last generation, they were talking about social status. Now we are working for quality of life. The current generation, people like you, you work for quality of your life. You want quality in everything. So when you are not really going to struggle for food because your grandfather, your parents have created that environment for you. They have brought you to the college and most of you have your own home. Okay. Most of you have, you know, everything that is needed. The basics of life has been taken care of. You are not going to struggle for the basics. Even if you struggle for the basics, I'm sure there are a lot of people are willing to support education. Having said that, we have to see how we can focus with a 100% belief in yourself. How we are going to focus on our academics. How we are going to focus on your skills. How we are going to fine tune your skills and the knowledge which is most needed by the industry. You know, you don't need to be, you know, subject matter expert 
in the first year. But as you move along, identify what you love the most. Whatever you love the most, whatever you like to do without much of efforts, whenever you do something, whatever you do, when you feel very happy to do it again, you don't look at your watch when you do that. It's called passion. Passion is the deep interest in some subject. Deep interest in something. Wherever you have the deep interest, you develop that interest as a skill. Develop that interest. Master that art. Master that skill while you are in the college. While you are studying other subject, identify your passion. Identify your dream. Start looking for inputs. Start looking for skills that will make the skills much more stronger. That skill that will make you much more effective. Okay. Start working on those skills so that you are going to master the skills. You are going to become, you know, one of the best in what you do. What industry wants is not just skills. You have a lot of skills, but you do not know how to express the skill, express your, you know, thoughts, express your dreams. Learn to express while in the college. You must learn to express your thoughts, express your dreams, express your passion to everyone around. Express in an effective way. So when you are in the college, you must learn. You must become a strong communicator, an effective communicator. Effective communication is not just in a language. It is not about you speak in Tamil or Telugu or Kannada or Hindi. It's about how effectively you are able to reach out to the audience. How you are able to talk to the people, the other people in front of you. Are you able to inspire them? Are you able to make them realize their true potential? Are you able to make a fire when you speak to the other people? Okay, you should be able to become an effective communicator. When you become an effective communicator, you will be able to communicate and you will be able to reach the minds of your listener. So why identify your passion, while you start working on your passion, while you are you know, developing skills around your passion, while you are in the college, you also learn effective communication techniques. Today, learning is not difficult. There is so much of learning available in the internet free of cost all that you have to do is you have to use your time for the important and not urgent you know most of the time you know we identify things which is important when the important becomes urgent you start running around you start doing firefighting friends whenever you understand something is important do it now don't wait for becoming urgent in the sense you get into important urgent the quality is going to suffer so i want each one of you to start prioritizing based on doing important things before it becomes urgent okay so when you start practicing that you are going to become a professional you are going to become successful in whatever you do. The time is a commodity which is available in equal quantity to everybody. The rich and the poor, the powerful and less powerful, the fortunate and unfortunate. For everyone, the time available is only 24 hours a day. In this 24 hours, what do we do? How we use this time determines how far we go. If you use your time more effectively, without wasting, without whiling away, for learning, for improvement, for building your network, you are going to become stronger, you are going to become successful. And people will say the network 
is the net worth. The kind of network you are able to make in the college. The kind of people you are able to make friends in the college. That will determine at some point in time. It will come very handy. So select your friends in the campus. When you are on the campus, identify people. Identify people who can add fuel to your fire, fuel to your passion. Identify, build a friendship with the people who are going to support, who will be able to add value to you. Identify friends who can help you grow your passion. You know, there is a beautiful saying, tell me who is your friend, I will tell who you are. Okay, identify people who will add value to you. Who will be able to understand your dreams? Who will be able to fine tune? Who will be able to help you grow in your career, in your passion? Okay, if you are able to understand this four years in the campus, three years during the graduation or in the polytechnic is one of the best time in your life. This is the time you will build new habits. New habits that will make you a success. New habits that will make you great. New habits that will make you rich. New habits that will make you true professional, true expert, true mastery in whatever you do. Friends, this is a great time. Your parents and your teachers have sent you to the college with a lot of beliefs and dreams. You have come to the college with a lot of beliefs and dreams. Remember your beliefs and dreams. Write down your beliefs and dreams in bold and black and keep seeing it every day. Seeing it is not enough. Every day you take one step towards achieving your dream. The law of attraction it very clearly states what you can dream could be achieved, what you can imagine could be achieved, what you can think of could be achieved. So if you think you want to do something, it could be achieved, it is possible. But all that you have to do, you have to work every day, day in and day out to achieve that. Be honest about your efforts. Honesty and hard work will make you a rock star in the domain that you want to build your career on. Honesty and the hard work. You know, you be honest about your efforts, honest about your dreams, honest about your passion, honest about your classes, honest about your teachers. Be honest about everything that you do. And Put your fullest hard work in all that you do. Fullest efforts and use your time wisely. Okay, if you can do that, I am sure you are going to be a rock star. You are going to do very well. Okay, I was talking about few things. I will just summarize what I spoke to you. Okay, identify your passion. Your passion is important. The world is waiting for passionate people. You are going to fulfill the dreams of people across the globe. You are a world standard. So if you want to become a world standard, your skills, your knowledge, everything has to be of world standard. See how we can fine tune, how we can you know, raise your standard to match the global standard. While in the college, Use your time to become a global standard, number one. Number two, use your time wisely. You know, time wasted is time lost forever. Okay, so use your time wisely. The four years or three years in the campus, use it for important and not urgent. Use your time, do activities when you know it is important before it becomes urgent. Number three, choose your friends. While in the campus, you choose your friends. Your friends will determine. The friends can help you achieve your dreams without much of challenges. Choose your friends while in the 
campus net worth is equal to net work okay number four learn learn to communicate effectively be a great communicator you should be able to express your thoughts your actions as a team as individual okay if you are able to take part in the teamwork activities in the campus you are able to communicate grab every opportunity to communicate express yourself if you are able to do that i am sure you are going to become truly successful you are going to be a great communicator okay the campus time in the campus is not something for fun it is for foundation there are dreams for your parents there are dreams for yourself you live your dreams make sure you are able to deliver where we start is immaterial where you have come from which school you have studied what mark is scored it's all immaterial all that you need is where you are going to reach how far you are going to go there is a beautiful statement made by our past you know president dr a p j abdul kalam where you start is immaterial where you finish your starting hand can be a simple happening but your finish has to be remembered the research shows that 80% of the graduate want to go for work after their graduation about 12% of the people want to go for higher studies and about 8% want to start some business having said that you should be able to decide what you really want to do and acquire skills and start practicing start behaving based on what you want to do after the graduation so that the college when you are in the college for 3 or 4 years you are able to practice you are able to learn based on what you want to become and every holiday every summer holidays every vacation you should be able to go take up a internship based on what you want to do after your graduation so never waste the time for anything other than you know building or going towards your dream you know same situation will look like a challenge for people who have very weak mind but the same situation will look like an opportunity for people who have a strong mind so you have to become a strong minded you have to become a strong minded individual so that you are able to make every day as an opportunity every day to move yourself closer to your dream if you are able to make that happen if you are able to make that as a habit you are going to make success as your habit becoming successful is certainly not difficult for people who develop habits that are followed by successful people use lot of internet for learning the habits of successful people the learning of people who achieved contributing to the world the successful people are the people are not just based on the money or the bank balance there are a lot of success stories that is adding value to the society how you can make an impact to the society that will determine how successful you are okay you are starting a career today to make yourself successful after your graduation start practicing the skills that is needed for you to be successful after your graduation today so that with this initiative you will be able to make a better future better career and you will be better citizens to this world become a global standard learn all the skills that is needed for you to compete globally believe in yourself you can make it happen you can do it if you cannot do it nobody else can do it in this world believe in that okay once again i thank icit academy for this wonderful opportunity
I congratulate each one of you in this room to become truly successful. We'll be very happy to support people who are aspiring to become an entrepreneur, aspiring to get employed, aspiring to get higher studies in whatever capacity possible. Thank you very much. God bless you. Do very well. Thank you. Dr. Kumar Vishwanathan, Head, Shared Services, Mindtree. Dr. Kumar is a recipient of an honorary doctorate for people management. He joined Mindtree in November 2013 to set up and run a multifunctional global shared services organization. He is currently spearheading artificial intelligence initiatives like chatbot with machine learning capabilities and robotic process automation for some of the key internal processes. Having a master's degree in management, he has over 20 years of experience as HR in IT companies. He has obtained Brain Bench certification on HR concepts and business communication. He is also a Toastmasters certified advanced communicator, gold and advanced leader, silver. He is a member of Academic Council at SJIM Bengaluru involved in design of curriculum for management studies. Let's welcome Dr. Kumar Vishwanathan. Thank you. Hello friends. It's good to get connected. I have one challenge for all of you. Can you watch this video till the end without any break? It's just a matter of 20, 25 minutes maximum. Test yourself. See if you can get away from your mobile phone and pay undivided attention for the next 20, 25 minutes. Of course, if you're watching this on your mobile, it's not applicable. Congratulations on your major step towards self-development. Welcome to the college world. This reminds me of a very interesting dialogue from this series called Friends. I'm sure many of you would have seen it. There's a character called Monica. And she says this landmark dialogue. Welcome to the real world. It sucks. You're going to love it. I'm not going to say that it is going to suck, but it's all up to us how to make an effective use of the opportunity that's been given to us. I'm not going to give you some advices for the next 20, 25 minutes. I'm sure nobody likes it. Even I don't like. You know what? Thinking of advices, the best advice I ever received several years ago was from a friend of mine, a little senior person. He told me, if you want to be successful, please follow all the advices you have given to others. That's always the most difficult thing. So I don't want to give any advices. I'm going to spend some of my time to share with you some of the life learnings that I've had in the last few years. I'm not going to restrict this to either academia or for industry, but many of these things are applicable uh, generally in all walks of life for all of us. Let me just start with a very interesting statistics that came out of a worldwide survey. There was a survey that was conducted, I think it was by MIT, if I remember correctly, uh, several years ago. They reached out to a lot of successful people across the world. And then the intention or the purpose of the survey was to find out what are those attributes that determine somebody to be successful. There was a very interesting result that came out of this exercise, this survey. There were multiple attributes that were given certain percentages that determines success for an individual. Only 24% was attributed to core competency. The balance 76% was attributed to what they call as other skills. Other skills can be leadership, interpersonal skills, communication skills, your ability to handle pressure, your ability to connect with people, the passion, the desire to learn, initiatives that you take, perseverance, etc., etc. Core competency could be anything, something that you are a master in. 
if it is finance, if you've taken, it can be human resources, it can be mechanical, it can be anything, automobile. So if you look at this statistic, whatever is your key subject, that is going to contribute only 24% for you to achieve success. There is a balance 76% that is extremely important. I have to pay attention. Those who pay attention end up succeeding. I want to touch some of the aspects in this 76%. Of course, I'm not qualified enough to get into the core competency because I'm no expert in some of the things what you people are doing or going to learn as part of your college and beyond college. What would be your stream, whether it is engineering, art, science, what would be the stream? Please remember, it's been scientifically proven only 24% of your subject knowledge is going to help you to succeed. The balance 76% is more important. I would say equally important. Sometimes in some cases, more important for you to achieve success. Of course, as part of this process, you're going to meet a lot of people, learn from a lot of people, understand and see how you can contribute, how you can also pick a new set of things that is going to help you in succeeding, not just in your college, but also at work after you start working. Maybe you may be doing something on your own. You may become an entrepreneur. You may work for somebody. But in all these aspects, you're going to work with a lot of people. Uh, my, my daughter also uh, some some couple of years ago told me when she entered her college that uh, her professor is extremely tough. So I was thinking inside, I couldn't tell her, but I want to tell you, if you are uncomfortable and if you think your professor, your teacher is tough, just wait till you meet your first manager. Who's going to save you? These are not my words. These are words that came from Bill Gates in his book several years ago that he had written. I want to spend a few minutes on some of the key aspects, couple of examples, couple of aspects that I will touch upon on those other skills that I talked about earlier. And then see how I learned over a period of last 20, 25 plus years and then pass on this uh, knowledge with you and see whether it makes sense to you. There are two things. Uh, first thing I want to cover is effective communication. All of us know that communication is very important. Communication skills is something that uh, we keep talking about. Our parents keep talking about. Our teachers keep talking about. Our friends. Uh, whenever you go to social media, whenever you go to any, any, any source of information, uh, there is always abundant stress that is given to um, effective communication. That's the difference between communication and effective communication. Simply from a definition standpoint, communication is nothing but an exercise where I as a sender have something in my mind that I'm able to visualize, that I'm able to see. And if I can control that thought process, articulate it in a language that is understandable and convey it in a way that you are able to see exactly what I'm seeing in my mind then there is a connection that is established. And then there is this connection. There are signals that go. People who do engineering obviously can understand this. But again, this is commonsensical. Anybody can understand. If I'm able to see, visualize, and then communicate it in any language, language is just a tool. It does not matter whether it's English, Tamil, Marathi, whatever be the language. If you're able to understand that and then articulate in a way that I understand, and if you are able to see that, then we can say there is a communication or there is a connection that is established. And that is when I as a sender, I have a responsibility to ensure that the receiver who receives a piece of information understand or sees in the way I see. Now, if you're able to do that, that's when you call it an effective communication. A lot of people keep talking. Yeah, but there's no guarantee that it has been received to the extent what it should. We always, whenever we are in a conversation, particularly in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, whenever someone is talking to us, our mind usually is a typical human behavior. 
we are practicing or mentally we are rehearsing how I should respond to that, which means we are not actively listening. We are just rehearsing what should be the response. That's not what we call as communication. Communication is something that I am able to tell or articulate in a way that is palatable, that is understandable, so that there is a connection that is established and then you're able to see things like how I as a sender is able to see. Now, if that is something that we are able to achieve, then there are very high chances that we can be successful because communication plays a very important role in a, in, in a variety of areas in all walks of life. I'll, I'll give you a personal example that I will never forget when it comes to communication and the importance of stress the words, certain words that we have to stress, which conveys a lot of things. This happened about uh, 13, 14 years ago. I'm a hematocyst professional, so deal with people all the time. There was one complaint about one individual uh, at work. Uh, one girl came and complained something about that particular individual and there was an investigation. And then uh, as part of that committee, I was also part of that committee, we had to hear from both sides and to try to understand what the real issue was. And we we're going through that process. So as part of this process, we had to listen to both the complainant as well as the respondent. People uh, responded as somebody who has to, uh, where the charges has been claimed uh, or filed against. So I was talking to, uh, basically listening to two, three different parties and also a few witnesses. It was one statement one individual made that completely shifted the whole investigation in totally a different direction. And he made that with, with one very interesting statement. He said, I never said she is dating him. Simple sentence. I never said she is dating him. Now, you can practice this at home. If you keep stressing on any of these words, it has a totally different meaning. If you look at the first word, I never said she is dating him, conveys one meaning. I never said she is dating him, conveys totally a different meaning. Of course, I don't want to spend too much time on each and uh, every word, but I, I think you get the point. The next example that I want to talk about or the next aspect that I want to touch upon before we wind up is uh, goal. The goal that we said, again, more than the goal, uh, there are two things when it comes to goal. One is what is a goal? And second one is how to achieve that goal. One interesting thing that I've learned, uh, this is something that I've learned the hard way in my life is we always get bogged down when it comes to goal setting. Why? Because we are not sure whether how we can achieve it. You're always worried. Once you set a goal, how are you going to achieve it? What is it I need to do? How do I do that? Do I have all the resources? Have I got all the training? Will I be able to achieve it? Will I be able to manage all the challenges? Will I have time? Do How do I prioritize this? There are so many things that I have to do, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So the, my, my learning here is more than the how part, the what part of the goal is very important. If you know what your goal is, chances are you will definitely succeed. A lot of people don't succeed in life, not because they didn't have skill, not because they're not putting the hard work. It's because they simply don't know what they want to achieve. They simply don't know what is it that is important to them for them to be successful. So my experience is, Sometime, let me give you this example. Sometime around 2015, when I was 45 years old then, all of a sudden, I had this desire to complete a marathon. You know, marathon is 42 kilometers, 42 kilometers, 190 meters. And I've never run in my life. The last time I ran was when I was in my sixth standard for a 100 meter dash. After that, I never used to run. So when I told this to my friends, my people, my family, Everybody laughed at me. But I was a little serious. I thought maybe it's doable. It's interesting. At least it is exciting. And some of my friends came back and told me, I think it's better you probably go for a 10K or a 5K or maybe a half marathon. 
and then go for a marathon. But that didn't sound exciting. That's what a lot of people do. So I was uh, at a stage in my life where I wanted to do something adventurous, something weird, something wacky. So usually it happens when you cross 40. So I'm no exception. So that's exactly what I decided. But I had no idea how I can train myself, what are the things I need to do, and how to run 42 kilometers. Technically speaking, human body is not designed to run long distances. When it's a long distance, I'm talking about 10, 15, 20 kilometers. We can run two, three kilometers. That's okay. Anybody can run. What would be the age? That's quite possible. But running 42 kilometers without stopping, uh, and the two, we are all amateurs. We are not professional athletes. Uh, it's usually something that people generally don't try. And that, that's one of the reasons why I chose this, because that gave me some kick. And I started with... With, with this goal, I, at least my goal was clear. My goal was to complete a marathon without stopping and without walking. I have to run and I have to end running a marathon and end in a healthy manner. I don't want to have any injuries. So goal was very clear. Finish a marathon without stopping, without any injury. Very clear goal. Now how I'm going to do this? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. But this has been in my head for about three, four months, and I was processing this, trying to see what to do, how to do. I took a simple step. I caught hold of a couple of people who have run marathon before. So I chose them as my mentors. I kept talking to them. And then they gave a lot of ideas. Uh, again, at least it was deeply ingrained into my body, in my mind, after several conversations that I had with a couple of mentors. Then I came up with a plan. I did a lot of research in the internet. I had to find out how do I condition my body? How do I condition my muscle? What kind of muscle strengthening I need to do? What kind of schedule I need to have during the first week, during the second week? So I came up with an eight-month plan. So during the first month, what should I do? What kind of focus I need to have when it comes to strengthening my muscles? Uh, when do I visit my gym? What are the things I need to do? How do I make use of the tools that are available in the gym, things like that. So I basically break these bigger problems into smaller ones and try to come up with something that is doable based on my body, my constitution, my style and my time, etc. And then I kept on practicing, started with two, three kilometers, four kilometers, and then slowly progressed, parallelly spending some time on strengthening my muscles. But I had that visual in my mind uh, always that uh, I will finish this in Kantira Stadium here in Bangalore uh, with thousands of people cheering on. But that was the visual that I had in my mind. Nothing else mattered. And for the next eight months, I kept on doing what my mentors told me, some of the things what I did based on the research that I had, and then kept doing it. Uh, there's, no, there's no, there's no uh, magic formula. Just that you'll have to believe in that and then keep doing and then see where it takes you. Make sure that you don't get injured. You make sure that you have all the right attire, the best shoes that is possible, get the best uh, training, exposure and all that and then kept on doing. And then the D-Day arrived. Now, interestingly, uh, one thing that I realized was when I was running, I, I would have on that D-Day, on the day that I had to run my marathon, the 16th, October 2016, I would have crossed probably 16, 17 kilometers, not even halfway through. And then the body, obviously, of course, although it is trained, started telling me to stop. Now, that's where the exciting thing happened. Usually, when the mind tells us to do something, we just obey. If the mind tells us to stop, we stop. Here was an opportunity for me to tell something back to the mind. My dear mind, now you listen to me. I've been listening to you for years. Now you listen to me. I'm going to try. I'm going to stretch maybe another half a kilometer and then see where it takes me. And that was exciting because that is an experience that I never experienced before. Because we usually follow whatever instruction that we get from the mind. Here was an opportunity for me to counter that. We, you call it uh, determination or uh, perseverance, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, it's a dialogue or it's a conversation that you have within yourself. And that was very exciting because I was experiencing something that I've never experienced before. 
because I never used to counter my mind. I used to blindly follow. And then I kept on doing it for every half a kilometer, every one kilometer. And eventually I was able to complete the marathon that day. So what I learned from that exercise was it is important that you set a goal. Whatever be the goal, you want to become an astronaut, you want to become a CEO of a company, you want to become a gold medalist in your university, you want to go for Olympics, you want to represent India, you want to play for Indian cricket team, whatever be the goal. I think it's very important that you first set a goal and process that in your mind and completely believe in it. And don't worry about how you're going to do that. That doesn't matter. It will come later. The how part always comes later. Once you're clear what your goal is, the whole world will conspire for you to succeed. And that is something that I learned. And in that process, there are things that you will experience that you have not experienced before. And that gave me something that I started believing in. It's important to have a goal and it may not be important to know how we're going to achieve it. And this is something that I believe is applicable to all of us in all walks of life. So my dear friends, make sure that you have some skills that on the communication front that you will continue to invest your time, your money on all the time because that is one of the key ingredients for you to succeed. It's just not your core competency. Core competency is important. I'm not trying to undermine your core competency, whatever be your core competency. But don't try to undermine the other skills. It's extremely important. That is definitely will help you, will help you to succeed. And then make sure you have a goal. It does not matter how you want to achieve it. But once you know you have a goal, you will end up working towards it and that's how you will achieve all the things whatever you want to achieve if you know how to do things you will always have a job if you know why you do them you will be a leader welcome to the real world it does not suck you're going to love it best wishes thank you very much Vijay Lakshmi Subramanian, Associate Vice President, Human Resource, Pioda Technologies. Ms. Vijay Lakshmi Subramanian is a strategic human resource professional experienced at leading human resource in a highly matrix corporate environment. She is passionate about internal and external customer experience and have been recognized by team and business partners for authentic leadership and collaborative style. She has held various roles within the human resource function, partnering closely with management teams in HR leadership. Let's welcome Vijay Lakshmi Subramanian. One of the things that I want to say all of you is that uh, in a country like India, where the literacy rate is only close to 78%, each one of us have got the opportunity to get into a college to learn. That itself is a great blessing. And especially during this pandemic, where we have uh, you know, a lot of things happening around the world. We have a lot of people losing their jobs, losing a lot of things. In, in the midst of all that, we are getting the opportunity to enter into a college and continue with, your, with our education. So first of all, thank you for, for that. We need to thank the mother nature and also definitely our parents who have taken this effort to educate us, right? How much ever pain that they go through, I think we have got the blessing of all of them to enter and continue the education. You know, there are a lot of people that are underprivileged in our country. They're not able to continue their education for whatever be the reason. And we are all in the privileged lot. So we need to definitely, you know, be happy for it and thank each one of us for getting this opportunity and cherish this moment, right? And most importantly, at, you know, at this juncture of when we are entering into a college education, it's a totally new, different ballgame altogether, right? Um, 
whether we are going to an arts and science graduate to become an, an arts and science graduate or an engineering graduate for us education is something that is going to take us throughout our life it's not that it is a one time effort whatever we learn today we are going to either implement it or use it some place at some point of our time right in our life so today i'm so glad that i have the opportunity to remotely connect with you because of this advancement in science and technology and especially through this powerful medium called internet and powerful medium called webinar jam uh, so thank you for that and thank you icjcc academy for giving me this opportunity i'm so glad that i got i'm getting this opportunity today especially at this juncture one of the things that all of you would wonder is what next always in life when we land up in a place where we aspire to be the moment we land up we always start to think what next right um it is very strange but that is how the human mind is right and you would already be thinking about okay i have already entered into a college what next after i finish college what am i going to do so we all have this progress of thinking and uh, we are all very a uh, positive that way and that is a great blessing again so one of the things is we would definitely be thinking either to become an entrepreneur or to become an employee some in some other place right so today i want to focus a little bit on what are some of the things that we need to acquire through this journey of education in the in the college during your college days whether it's going to be a three year course or a four year course or a five year course whatever time duration you are going to be in the college what what we need to definitely be focusing on so that that helps us to shape our career next right so that is one thing that i thought i'll throw some light on for the next 15 20 minutes we will be discussing about that i will share a screen it's a deck right So how do we go land in a dream job and land in a success career? For all of us, becoming the person that we aspire to be is one of the greatest achievements in our life, right? So each one of us, we would have a passion to become something. It could be a dream job or a business or whatever profession we land in, right? So today we will be discussing. the difference between what is knowledge and experience and how important it is to leave our comfort zone and why is it important to continuously keep learning and how important it is to prepare our resume and what are the benefits of internships or projects and industry exposure that's what we are going to see So typically, if you look at in a college, what we normally get is knowledge. So, so much of information or data, right? So, when I say information or data, it is scattered all over the place, everywhere. Today, if you open, if you take your phone, and if you Google anything that you see is data, right? The data is that we see today is. some some of it are validated some of it are not validated the validated data we take it as you know refined one and we start using it but there are a lot of other data if you look at several other data that we have where it is somewhere lying but we we don't know how to really integrate and effectively utilize it right for example if you look at we may be graduating in science or we may be graduating in arts or even in engineering so even for that we may be learning physics or chemistry or, or maths or uh, in in arts we may be um, taking even english as one of the course so so much of information so when we google also we get so much of information how much of it are we really processing in our head so, right so that's so that's only tacit knowledge what we are getting in college is tacit knowledge 
But when you enter into a corporate, when you enter into a job, what happens is you start to connect the dots. So you have a lot of dots, that is the data, right? And you get to connect each one of them and try to implement it. That is what is your experience or the industry experience or the job. When we enter into a job, that is what it really helps us to really understand how to connect these dots and how do we normally get to utilize it or effectively use it in our own uh, work. So that's what experience gives us. So, you know, scattered information is tacit knowledge and connecting the dots and integrating gives us the experience. So typically if you look at 5% only, we'll be using the explicit knowledge. The other thing, the 95% is about thinking, competence, commitment, deed, and that is what is very much important in our life. Explicit knowledge is not going to help us. Unless we integrate and derive some meaning out of it, that knowledge is what is going to help. That is what is deep rooted knowledge, right? That is classic knowledge. So how do we, most importantly, when we get this knowledge, when we acquire this knowledge, what next will we do? We'll have to look at landing up in a career. Either it could be a business or it could be even a job or it could even be a freelancing work, right? So we need to really figure out, choose what we are going to do. So while we are entering this workforce, what are some of the competencies that we need to acquire in order to be successful there, right? So the first and foremost thing that we all need to adapt is adaptable. How do we adapt to an environment? For example, when we land up, let's say, let me take an example of a software job, right? For, let's say if, uh, if you aspire to become a software engineer and if you happen to join a software company, you may be posted in a team and let's say you're so used to working in between, you know, or studying between 9 to 5, but this particular team possibly is starting the day at 7 in the morning, what do you do? We have to adapt ourselves, right? We can't be making our choices by saying, no, I don't think 7 works for me. Do we just throw away that? No, we, can't. we have to adapt ourselves. How do we adapt ourselves is the first and foremost thing which is very important when we enter into workforce. The second thing is self-motivation. Up until now in our life, somebody would have always motivated us to do something, right? Even our parents motivate us, our siblings, our friends, our relatives, our neighbors, everybody motivates us in some way, shape or form. But then we are going to enter into a critical phase in our life where we have to self-motivate. We can't be looking at others motivating us. We have to understand we have reached a point where we will have to motivate ourselves. So that is self-motivation. And the third thing is how reliable we are. How do we showcase that to an employer that we are highly reliable? What do we normally do? Let's say for example, we are given a job and if we take close attention to details. Eye for details is very important. And then we pay close attention to it and get back the work, which is whatever is given to us, we complete the work and give it to them within the stipulated time. That is when we become reliable. And it can't be just once, twice. We have to repeatedly do it over and over again. That is where we get reliable to them, right? For example, you join a new team and in the new team, you would have all strange faces, new faces. But when we enter into the team, they may be strange, but over time, we collaborate with them, we work closely with them, they become familiar 
at when we build when we build collaboration, when we collaborate with them, we we start to understand things much easily. And when we start to deliver, it, we become reliable partners there, right? So we have to, so one of the things which is extremely important is speaking up also, right? If I do not know something, we, we should not shy away. We should be very open about asking questions, asking the right questions. When I say, you may wonder why am I saying right questions? Because we, I can ask hundreds of questions, but is it even relevant to my work? That's something we have to think before asking that question. And how is it going to help me understand the issue on hand? That's another thing. So it's extremely important that we have to make ourselves very open and we have to showcase that we are very candid about things and there is no need to hide anything, there is no need to camouflage. It's very important that we are very open about things. At the same time, when you are very expressive, the employer also would understand how good you are and that way it becomes very, very easy for them become a reliable partner to them. And the fourth one is flexibility. We talked about adaptability, adaptable, flexible, or synonymous. We've got to be flexible to some of the terms that are that the term uh, that the team is using, right? We've got to be definitely, you know, be flexible about what how things are going on. We can't be saying that I can't be doing this, I can't be doing that. We've got to be very, very flexible from the standpoint of um, adjusting to the team, right? The next one is teamwork. What is teamwork? We've got to definitely work as a team. We cannot say that it is um, difficult for me, so I'm not going to be part of it or something like that. It's very important that we have to work together as a team. And in order to work as a team, it's important that teamwork is highly critical. So how do we we need to think our team, you know, instead of me, it should become we, right? It can't be always I, 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 it has to be we, we, we. So that's how it has to be. So we, would, we should be changing the way we operate, the way we speak. We have to represent as a team as opposed to I, 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 right? Because these days it's become more of I, right? We've started using iPhone, iPod, and all that. So it's become, it's, it's, we often use the word I. But I think when it comes to working in an environment, work environment, it is more of we, right? And most importantly, the cultural fit. So what is culture? What defines the culture of an organization? The people that are there in the organization, they define the culture of the organization. So how, how important is culture? Culture is something that is going to make and shape our personality, right? So in order to be culturally fit, we need to understand the folks around us. And as long as we understand our folks around us, we'll be able to be culturally fit, right? Moving on, one of the things that's very, very important and very critical for us to be successful is also continuous learning. When I say continuous learning, learning is a journey to the end of our life. To the last breath, you're going to learn something, right? So what happens when we learn something, we also understand and we have the ability to go help others understand some concepts, right? So we need to pay close attention to things that are happening around us. There could be occasions where somebody may not understand a very simple aspect or a concept. It's okay to teach them. So the more we teach others, they also learn. And we also get to learn new things. In the process of teaching, they also ask some questions. And that makes us to get a deeper understanding of what we already know. 
So it's important that learning never stops and we have to continuously learn. But there are occasions when we work in a company, there are occasions we have to unlearn certain things. What do you mean by unlearning? Unlearning is nothing but it, there could be a process that is fixed and we may have been following it for some time and then suddenly a new process comes in. So immediately we become very stringent and we become very inflexible. So that's where unlearning comes into picture. We have to unlearn whatever we know and we have to relearn the new aspect in order to get accustomed to this, right? That's when we become culturally aligned to what is happening. So it's important that we need to have the mindset of continuous learning, right? What are some of the hard skills and soft skills that are required? If you look at sometimes, um, let's say, if we have to go land a job in a foreign country, we may have to have proficiency in foreign language. Let's say if you want to go land up in France or in Germany or China or even in Russia, we need to know your local language. That's an additional advantage. Even while you're graduating, based on your interests, take, pick up on foreign language and learn. So that's a great, great value addition. Apart from that, obviously, the degree certificate, whatever, you know, how well you are, computer savvy, all that is good. But most importantly, in addition to these hard skills, we need to also be able to communicate very well. What is communication? Communication is not about speaking in the right, with a right grammatical sense. It's, it's about, it's not that. It's about actually make, making a point where whether it is grammatically correct or incorrect doesn't matter, but we should be able to make a point, right? Because I have come across a few folks. Um, recently, I happened to interview a candidate from a very small town, right? It's a small village though, in fact. Uh, she was very proud to say that uh, she is the first engineer from her family. That's from her entire village. She, only her parents allowed her to step out of that village to go and learn in a city. And she studied in Coimbatore and uh, she happened to uh, be the first graduate in her village. And she was so proud of it. And she was all along studying in that village and she was so happy to express that her parents made her do um, study and that is actually making going to make her as a better human being in the future. That's, that's something she was so proud of. And I was so moved. Although she, she couldn't speak the right grammar, she was able to make her point very candidly. She was very open about her thought process. She was very, very crystal clear and candid about what she felt. I was completely able to understand, right? So that's communication. It's not about just the right grammar. Yes, we have the right grammar, very good. But then if we do not know also, it's important that we have to speak our heart out. We should be able to speak what we have in our mind very openly. And again, flexibility. Leadership. Why do we need leadership? You may wonder, you know, I may just want to be a team member and not a team leader, right? I think each one of us are leaders in our own strictest sense, right? Because we are managing ourselves, which means we are leading ourselves, right? So same as the case, even in a team, right? Although we may have officially one team leader, it's important that we need to voice our opinion and we need to speak for the team sometimes. That's when you take the role of a leader and get things done. So that's going to be true even for a college environment. While you are in college, how you are going to you know, take care of yourself and how you are going to take care of even your friends and your other uh, co-students. That's also leadership. Right? 
And another important aspect is time management. One of the things that I have seen um, historically, India is very well known for not keeping up the time. That's not a good thing, right? At least we as students can uh, change that and try to be on time for anything that we do, right? So that's going to create a lasting impression in the employer's mind or anybody's mind for that matter. Wherever we need to do, let's be prepared at least one or ahead of time. So it's easy for us to kind of create an impression, the first impression, right? So those are some of the skills that we all need to, you know, sharpen it. Moving on, there are a few um, top soft skills and hard skills that are identified for this year, but that, that's getting a little got a listed here, but you need not worry. It doesn't end here, right? Each of each one of us have the creativity and intelligence to be a better person. So let's be creative. So gone are the days where you know there is one profession called okay, if it's a teaching profession, just go teach, come back. Today a teacher has to do a whole lot of things. It's not about just delivering the teacher is in charge of the student's behavior, the student's attendance, the way the students respond, everything, right? In addition to it, they need to track your progress and your projects and a whole slew of things, right? Every single thing. So that way, they are getting integrated with you and your family in a large way. So similarly, Every single position, it is not stopping with only that boundary. Now it is becoming boundaryless, right? Everybody has to go above and beyond. It is. It does not end with our role. Does not have boundaries these days. So we have to try and see what is the value addition that I can do anywhere, in any role that we play, right? Even as a student, we have to think about what I can do better, right? So that's something you need to definitely think of. So the next one that I want to talk about is why you really sharpen your saw in the college. The next thing is you want to land up in a job or become a freelancer. How would you, you know, showcase yourself in your resume? So you'll do all these stuff. This is all up on the internet, right? I don't have to go through every single thing. But make it impressive. Let your resume not be like 10 pages. You know, even a 20-year experienced person, they has one page resume. So that, again, is a great art. If he is able to condense his entire experience to one page or maybe at max two pages, why not us? We can definitely make a beautiful resume with some charts and which is which is very appealing to the employer by adding some nice colors, which is which really catches the attention. So those will be uh, good ones. We need to try and see how we can showcase ourselves well, right? It, it's not enough if we just put, oh, I've completed my B. I have completed my B, I have completed my B. That's not enough. Today, it's about going above and beyond what we can actually do over and above what we are learning in the college. So, where I, was I part of any extracurricular activity where I went to a slum to help people there, or I went to an orphanage to help kids there? or I went to a senior home to help Polish people there. So something like that, what have you done and how have you given back to the society? That also matters a lot. So we have to try and see how we can make an impact in the society as well, right? All these also helps in shaping our personality. When we go above and beyond, it really helps in shaping our personalities just a sample resume, one page resume. Okay, coming back to the projects and internships, right? So internship is nothing but you 
enter into a com company to get work experience. So they may give a POC, you know, proof of concept kind, kind of thing where you will be working on something where it may not be live but it may be very critical for your project, right? So that's something you may be engaged in. Apart from that, you will be given some project where that will add more value to your education, right? But unfortunately, these are all taken as namesake, right? These days, people think, oh, I have to go do internship, what to do? My college is forcing me to do internship. I think it has to be we who take the, you know, who should be taking the first step. I've been interacting with a few students abroad, and I got to know that there, even from the first year, they have points for students to go and work in a company, right, of your choice. They call it as co-op jobs. They, you know, we, ha we have foreign students coming down even to India to get work experience. So can you imagine in a country like India when, where we have plenty, plenty of opportunities, right? We need to also figure out a way while we are studying, family start to work in a company or where you think you really benefit to learn from, right? Our initial motive should not be money. I think it's important where we get the right experience, the right knowledge. That is where we have to try and intern. So that way you get, you know, just because the college says, okay, the fourth year you have to internship, doesn't mean you have to wait for the fourth year. Even in the first, second, third year also, you have your own vacation. You're in that vacation. You can ask the college, I would like to go for an internship. They'll be really happy to give you a letter, right? Because the company may really ask for a letter. So it's not something which is not workable. It is workable. So try and see how much ever experience you get additionally, it is good for you. Even sometimes you go to an industry which is totally not connected also. So be it. You just gain some experience. Right? And apart from it, even the projects that you do, we have to try and see how you make it very impactful. Let's not do anything just because somebody says it. We need to have the most important thing that is that is required is the passion. Right? The more passion we have, the better it is because the passion is what is going to take us a long way. Right. So um, this is the very nice quote that I like. When one door closes, another opens. But all too often, there's a long hallway in between. How do you manage that? And that's what is very important, right? So um, I'm sure there has been some amount of input from this. Um, I wish you all a very good luck. And uh, um, especially for all of you all, it's very important that you start to uh, take this curriculum, whatever you learn now, very seriously, because that's going to take you a long way in your life. So I uh, wish you very good luck um, now and in the future too. Thank you. A big thanks to all the speakers for taking their time out, out of their busy schedule to address the students. Each of the speakers have brought insights which we sincerely believe would be a stepping stone for the students to drive ahead towards their path of success. Unlike in the past, students should aware the kind of change the world is going through, set their goals and pursue them with perseverance and achieve success in their career. While education institutions and teachers are making their earnest efforts to shape your career, it is the duty of you students to reap the best benefit out of your education. Above all, it is very imperative for the students to be constant learners to move ahead for being a successful person in your career. Wishing you all the best. Stay home, stay safe.